as the M4 iPad finally met its competition with the new Surface Pro that has an X Elite processor built in, which is way more powerful than before, as well as getting better battery life. Now today, we are gonna do a full comparison, and there are quite a bit of differences between these different strengths, some which I think are really going to surprise us. Now, as you guys can see, I have the keyboards attached to both of them, and they have a different design. As you know, the iPad floats in the air on the Magic Keyboard, and we now have this nice aluminum cover with a really nice magnetic trackpad. Whereas on the Surface Pro, you have the old keyboard that is less expensive. It's a little bit more flimsy. The trackpad is a diving board design, so it doesn't feel as nice. And it actually attaches right here on the bottom magnetically. Which one do I like better? Well, they're both good, but I do like this design because we can attach it and then you can actually prop it up like this it gives you a nice natural angle. The keyboard does feel quite nice, just like the Magic Keyboard does, but you can easily remove this and you still have that kickstand on the back. Whereas with the iPad, when you get rid of the iPad itself, you know, it's a tablet and you have to have this full large piece in order to have it just sitting there supported at an angle that you like. Now, another thing I really like is the adjustability on the Surface Pro. On the iPad, this is pretty much all you get right here. Whereas with the Surface Pro, I can go all the way down with that stand as low as this. You get the perfect angle that you want. And of course, with the keyboard, you could do that as well. You don't have to buy this. You could just buy any Bluetooth keyboard and then use that stand where that is really nice. And with that on the back, you can actually swap out the SSD on this thing yourself for really cheap. Compared to the iPad, it's only what you buy built in for a lot of money. Now here are the full specs side by side for you guys to see. And I think the biggest reason why people are comparing these tablets and trying to decide which one to buy is because they're both tablets, they're both very portable, but the Surface has a full operating system. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. Now, this is called the Pro and this is called the Pro, but the Surface also has extra ports. So on the left hand side, we have two USB-C ports with ultra fast speeds, 40 gigabit per second. The iPad has one on the right hand side. And then the iPad also has uh, USB-C in the keyboard just for charging, whereas the Surface comes with their magnetic connector for charging as well. So you have more port options on the Surface and it's built in, you don't have to have the keyboard. To me, that sounds a lot more pro than what the iPad offers. Now, of course, the iPad is insanely thin compared to the Surface. The Surface, because of that stand and the SSD and actually has fan cooling, it's almost twice as thick as the iPad. And then if we are comparing weight, well, it's not double the weight, but it's getting there. That difference is pretty shocking. So if you're using these in the hand, well, the iPad feels a lot lighter, a lot more comfortable compared to using the Surface, and I wouldn't wanna spend an hour or hours hand holding this and using it. Now, as far as the displays, I thought the iPad would destroy the Surface, but as far as overall regular brightness, they are quite close. Even though the iPad is rated higher, the Surface also has a nice OLED display. It's not tandem, it is not as good, but it still gets so bright for YouTube HDR videos. Now it's rated at 900 compared to 1600, but most videos don't have that. Maybe some movies will kick that in, but I'm just shocked by how good the display on the Surface is. I was not expecting it. It's bright, HDR looks good, contrast is not as good, but I would be more than happy with the one on the surface. Now, the one area where the iPad does do so much better is the anti-reflectivity because the coatings are amazing on the iPad. 
the surface is quite reflective. So if you're outside or in a very bright room, you will notice that. Now, as far as overall sharpness and detail, the pixel density is fairly close and both of them have high refresh rate to variable refresh rate screens. So that is nice. Now, both of these have face unlock. So with the iPad, Face ID is working. And with the Surface, Windows Hello, bam, logs me right in. That is nice. And what about the cameras? This is the Surface Pro's 1440p front camera. As you guys could see, it is really wide. We have dual front facing microphones. And as far as I could tell, the detail and HDR is very good. And here is the iPad Pro's 1080p front camera. Now, this is also the wide mode. You can have it crop in quite a bit. It's now landscape, which is nice. But you guys let me know which one sounds better and which one looks better down in the comments below. Now, with the surface being so much thicker, how are the speakers in this one compared to the iPad? Now, they are front facing right here at the top. So let's go ahead and take a listen. <laughs> You guys heard that for yourselves and the Surface does a really good job. It's louder than I expected, has pretty good bass, but the iPad is shockingly good. I don't know how they get such good sound quality from such a thin device. So it definitely is better in terms of sound. And now let's get into performance because we have the X Elite with 12 performance cores compared to the M4 chip with three performance cores. Um, this is a crazy difference. Both are in a tablet, but let's go ahead and run the CPU test. Guys, this is impressive. So as far as single core, of course the X Elite loses out. Nothing is as fast as the M4, but it still has 2853, which is good. And as far as multi-core, we have 14,689 on the Surface Pro beating out the M4. That is very, very impressive. And that is on battery power. Now, I also tested it plugged in, and the difference is pretty much insignificant, which is amazing because uh, previously with Intel systems, you'd have a big slowdown in terms of battery power. And I like to be mobile, I like to be free. Now with the X Elite, I mean, this performance out of a tablet on battery, is awesome. And now let's test out web browsing and web application performance. I have Speedometer 3.0 opened up. Now, as you see, the iPad does win out. This is an amazing score, about 22, 23% faster, but the Surface is still very fast, especially for running full Windows instead of iPad OS. The iPad is the best, but either way, both are gonna be fairly quick. Now, we've done a ton of testing on the X Elite, and of course, this runs iPad OS, so I can't run the same test we do for a laptop comparison. But the next one I wanna do is 3D Mark as far as graphics performance, because the M4 is a beast. This is the new Steel Nomad Lite, which is using the latest tech. It's a tougher test than ones we ran before. And looking at the results, I mean, this is a huge difference. We have 15.76 FPS compared to 28.2. That's about 80% greater frames per second. Now, I will say that I'm surprised by the Surface because the other X Elite laptops, full laptops, I believe scored less than this tablet. And I didn't even hear the fans on here. So it's performing great. But if you need really good graphics performance, well, the iPad is better. Now, in terms of gaming, of course, the iPad, there's so many mobile games available that are iPad optimized. But here we have Windows. So there's a ton of Windows games that you can run, but I would still not buy this device for gaming. And now I have Lightroom opened up on both of them. Of course, with a Surface, I can run Lightroom Classic as well. I can't do that on the iPad, but with this, let's go ahead and flip through a few of these here. Performance is the same. It is crazy. Let's go ahead and maybe zoom in right over here. We have a little different function, single versus double tap. 
very, very quick. I do have to say that once again, I prefer the desktop version of these applications. They're just easier to use in my opinion, being a long time laptop and computer user. Let's go ahead and export all 50 of these. Actually I have 48 in this particular album and the X Lead is flying through this seemingly quicker. All right guys, that is insane. I did not think that was gonna happen. The iPad took two minutes, 34 seconds. The X Elite took a minute and 24 seconds. Uh, How is that possible? I just think the way the program works with full windows, it seems to work awesome on this chip. You guys saw that performance of that CPU, it's better. Whereas with the M4 chip, when we compared it to the M2 previously, well, it was faster, but it seems like we're not getting all the benefits of this performance with iPad OS. And that is just crazy. Now, of course, there's gonna be programs that are not optimized for the X Elite yet, but there are so many programs. I can, I can run full DaVinci Resolve made for ARM, Premiere Pro's coming out. There's a lot of professional programs that are gonna work on this tablet, which is a full computer. And that's where I have to talk about the actual operating systems. Now with the iPad, if you're gonna run, you know, those iPad games, if you're gonna use the Apple Pencil, you like to draw, the Apple Pencil is better than what you could do with a Surface. It is a good tablet. But when we're looking at the price points of these and you're buying a keyboard, you're using it kind of like a laptop, iPad OS is frustrating. My kid uses an iPad for uh, most of his things and he's constantly frustrated like, dad, I can't change this program or else my video export cuts out or my audio cuts out, all these limitations. And with even external drives, we have those extra ports that I showed you. The iPad can't even fix a drive that could get corrupted, which happened to me. I plugged it in the Surface, it fixed it. I think when you're spending this much money, even though the Surface is not as awesome as far as the hardware, the screen's not as good, speakers aren't as good, it has some limitations. Overall, it's a well-rounded machine. And if you're looking for something that is like an, a laptop, but ultra portable can be used as an iPad for the form factor, but you don't have limitations on your applications, this is the true professional device. The iPad could be that, Apple just doesn't want it to be as far as software. And I understand you want an iPad, buy an iPad that's cheaper, buy an iPad Air, that's our recommendation. But when you're spending this much money, you have a device that's labeled Pro on both of them. The iPad Pro, even though the hardware is great, the software does not match up to be called Pro. Whereas the Surface now with the X Elite chip inside of there, runs cooler, quieter, performance is better, battery life is better. This is the true pro device. Now I did start out with 100% on both. This one's down to 72% on battery. The iPad is at 92%. So iPad OS is very efficient. Um, the chip is more efficient, the M4 chip as well. But I had this in the best performance. You could use it in balance, but it still has really good battery life compared to the previous Intel version. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I just wanna say that I am very impressed with what you get as a package here. And if I had to buy one of the two and I could only have one device, I would be buying the Surface. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.